Okay, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi and a very good morning to all uh, my beloved Form 5 student. Okay, so today we continue uh, chapter 1.2, Resolution of Forces. Okay, so how are you today? Okay, semua? Why no sound? Okay, tired. Okay. All right, come, uh, we start. Eh? So, 1.2, resolution of forces. Resolution of forces. Uh, last week, we looked at resultant force. Okay? So, 1.1 is resultant force. We just uh, recap what we learned last week. Eh? So, chapter 1.1. Uh, okay, so this is a resultant force. So, in resultant force, resultant force, okay. So, we actually um, uh, combine, okay. Let's say we have two, two force acting on one object. So, these two, two force acting one, one, uh, on one object, uh, we can combine them to calculate the resultant force. Okay, so means that let's say you have force like this. Uh, uh, I give you a simpler example. So let's say we have this horizontal to the left. Let's say this is F1. And then horizontal upward. So let's say this is F2. So the combination of these uh, two forces, okay, will give you one force like this. Uh, so, this is, uh, we call this as the resultant force. Okay, a resultant force. So, we said two force combine, um, uh, become one singular force. So, we call that as resultant force. Now, today we look at resolution of force. Uh, chapter 1.2, resolution of forces. Okay, here, resolution of forces. Right, maybe we look at this diagram first, okay, showing a boy. Uh, let's say I just named this as, katakan, this is, let's say, Umar. Umar and let's say, Ahmad. Yeah, so Umar uh, pulled Ahmad. Ahmad is sitting on, what do you call this thing? Uh, Upe. You know Upe or not? Coconut, is it coconut um, leaf? Okay, uh, so see uh, Umar pulling Ahmad who is sitting on the upe. And then the force exerted by Umar is in this direction. Okay, that direction. But then uh, um, Ahmad move not following this direction. Instead, Ahmad is moving horizontally. Yeah, just like when you pull a trolley back. Let's say you have a trolley back. Eh? Let's say this is a trolley back. So when you pull the trolley back, so you pull, let's say, uh, kejap. Okay, you pull like this. Eh? But then the trolley back does not, after some time, the trolley back does not move up and then move higher like that. Instead, the trolley back is moving horizontally like that. Okay, so this um, uh, this motion, okay, so shows that although the force is acting, the real force, okay, when you look like this, uh, the pulling force is this direction, but then the effective component of force, okay, is in horizontal direction like that. Okay, so it means that the force here. Okay, can be resolved into horizontal component. And actually at the same time, so this pulling force also can be resolved into another component which is upward. Okay, so we look at this first. Okay, let's say you have this force, the one that exerted by Omar just now. So let's say this is F. Okay, so this F actually can be resolved into horizontal and vertical component. So, 
Okay, I draw the axis first. So before you resolve the force, so you need to draw the axis. So we have a horizontal and vertical axis. So let's say, all right, so this is X axis, horizontal. And then here, all right, so this one is the vertical axis. Okay, so when you resolve F, you will get this. Yeah, so this one is the horizontal component. So I can label this by using Fx. And then another one to the vertical axis. Huh? All right, so this is F, we label it as Fy. Okay, so in between um, uh, vert, uh, uh, the F and also the horizontal component, so let's say we label this as theta. There is an angle. So if you use um, a cos theta, what do you get? Cos theta. Okay, you look at this carefully. Actually here, this can form a right angle triangle. I draw it again. Can see? So this is a right angle triangle actually. And then this FY is actually similar to this side. So it means that this one also is an FY, vertical component. So I can also label a row like that. And then this part, see here, here, is actually the same as FX. Okay, so we can also label this, okay, with the arrow as F. X. Okay, so when we are talking about right angle triangle, okay, right angle triangle, so cos theta, this cos theta is equal to opposite, uh, sorry, uh, adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So this is the adjacent, so this is the hypotenuse. So it means that the F that we draw earlier is actually the hypotenuse of the triangle. So from here we can write cos theta. It's actually equal to, okay, adjacent, which is Fx, divided by F. So I can write like this. Fx divided by F. Okay, so from here, we can write uh, Fx. You can bring F to the left. So it means that this can bring to the left. So it becomes F cos theta. So which means fx is equal to f cos theta. Can follow not? Boleh? Teacher, uh, I have a question. Uh, for in MS, there's a chapter, Solution of Triangles. Uh, are we allowed to use like the cosine rule and sine rule for physics? Which one? Uh, like a squared plus b squared equals, no, a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c equals to c squared. Okay, uh, we look at the question. Okay, once we look at the question, then um, uh, I think you better show me uh, which question. Okay, then we see how. Um, yeah. I think should be okay. Can. Okay, but then we have not looked at the question yet, right? Okay, until we see the question, uh, then, uh, then I will guide you whether you can use that formula or not. Okay, uh? yeah. Thank you, right. okay so here, from here, now, then you look at Fy, okay, Fy. So from here, you see? So Fy will be the opposite. Huh? So you can use sine, see, huh? sine theta will be equal to, so this is theta, right? So sine will be opposite divided by uh, hypotenuse. So you can write Fy over uh, F. So from here, you can bring F to the left, so you will get Fy is equal to F sine theta. Is it clear or not? So this is important. And then here. Okay. So the purpose of using cos and, and uh, sine here is actually to get the horizontal and vertical component. So from here, so we know that this fx is equal to f cos theta, where this is the theta. 
And then the Fy is equal to F sine theta. Is it clear or not? So easy to memorize will be like this. Like this. If you want to get the um, horizontal component, okay, like this, uh, Fx. So you look at the angle, theta. So if you want to get the horizontal component, so you use cos. But if you want to get the the opposite opposite component, this one, not Fy, so you use sine. Or like this, you look at the angle, okay, you look at the angle. If you want to get the horizontal component using the, this angle, so you use cos. If you want to calculate the uh, opposite component, look at the angle, opposite component, so you use sine. Is it clear or not? Jelas? All right, so since we are talking about right angle triangle, uh, so this this triangle. So here also is another triangle. You can see, right? And then let's say I label this as alpha. Okay, so it means that now alpha plus theta is equal to 90 degree. Okay, so if I'm using alpha, what will be fx? Using alpha this alpha, what will be this fx? What should you use? Cos or sine? Correct. Sine. Yes. Okay. So if you use alpha, the fx component will be using sine. So it means that you can also write like this. Okay. So f x is equal to f sine alpha okay because uh, fx now is the opposite component of opposite to the angle that we refer to okay then fy if you use alpha what is fy what is fy if you use alpha Okay, yeah, you should be using uh, cos. Huh? So you see, again, alpha, so Fy is adjacent. So you use cos. All right, so F cos alpha. Okay, so now. See like that, nah? And then here. All right, so let's say um, theta is uh, 40 degree. Let's say this theta is 40 degree. What will be alpha? Fifty. Okay, because alpha plus theta is ninety, right? So alpha here, okay, will be equal to fifty degree. Okay, so which mean? Okay, let's say we just um, assume that this f is equal to one hundred newton. Okay, one hundred newton. So the formula become like this. So f is one hundred. Cos. Alpha just now is 40, so I can write right here as 40. Or, I can also write 100. If I'm using sine, if I'm using alpha, okay, alpha, alpha is 50, right? So use your calculator. Try to calculate cos 40 and sine 50. What do you get? Cos 40. What is the value of cos 40? Okay, good Ian. Yes, they have the same value. Okay, try, try, try calculate. So what do you get uh, for uh, sine 40? Uh, sine 50, sorry, sorry, sine 50. Can you type the value? Cos 40 first. F 
Alvin, is that cost 40? Okay, cost 40 is uh, 0 0.766. Can you write in four decimal place? What is the fourth number? Is it 0 0.7660? Okay, all right. So sine 50, do you still get 0 0.7660? Same, right? Okay, so it means that if whether you use cos 40 or sine 50, your answer will be the same. Okay, so which means if you want to solve problem, okay, uh, involving resolution of forces, Number one that you need to look at will be which angle you refer to, okay? So that angle determine whether you need to use cos or sine, okay? Don't quarrel with your friend. Don't argue with your friend. This is using cos. This is using alpha, okay? You might use the different angle. Clear? Okay, clear about this, huh? All right. Okay, now look at this diagram. So this is a free body diagram, okay, of uh, the forces acting on Ahmad. Okay, so we know that uh, the pulling force exerted by Umar just now is this. This is the pulling force. Okay. And then uh, other forces that acting on Ahmad is of course the weight pulling downward. Okay, 90 degree downward. Here is 90 degree. Yeah? And then uh, there is another force, the normal reaction, 90 degree from the surface. Okay, so means that from the ground. And then here, uh, there are friction. There is friction. Okay, opposite direction to the movement. Now, you can see that these forces are parallel but in opposite direction. Okay, so friction is um, parallel uh, to the, the ground and then you can see that this pulling force okay we can resolve it into two component which is which is this component uh, this one is the f x just now and then we have another component of the pulling force upward so this is the f y okay so it means that now the effective component that is acting on the uh, on ahmad is actually Fx, friction, Fy, normal reaction, and also the weight, okay? So, look at this diagram. Uh, that will be, uh, to be more uh, specific, uh, it will be like that, okay? So, if you want to determine the uh, net force, the net horizontal force acting on uh, Ahmad, so it will be this frictional force, frictional force and the horizontal component just now which is the fx this one okay and then uh, the vertical component uh, net vertical component will be this and this so we still apply what we learned last week where if let's say the same direction the force acting you need to plus it if opposite then minus okay just like this right so this this fx okay fx is to the right friction is to the left. So you can, uh, means that Fx minus friction, that will be the net horizontal component. If you want to determine the net vertical component, it will be this plus, uh, okay, this two plus minus uh, the opposite direction downward. Okay. Okay, so far so good. Huh? Any question? Yes, so from here, this is the definition of resolution of force. Uh, process uh, resolving a force into two effective components. Okay, so I by sure. now, yeah. I actually have a question. Just now what I meant was, because in maths, right, when we are given a triangle question, we are not able to use the formulas that are given in at maths. So I was wondering if in physics, we can use the formulas given in at maths also. Uh, but I need to look at the triangle first. 
Okay, Not I need bad. to look at the triangle that you refer to. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, maybe in school you can show to me ataupun later you can send through uh, PM me. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, because um, um, what I um, understand might be not the same question as what you ask. Okay, so it's good for you to send me the diagram. Okay, uh, then I can comment. Okay. Okay, uh? all right. Okay, so by now, uh, this one should be okay already. Eh? So you have one force. Okay, no matter where is the direction. So that force can be resolved into two components, which is the vertical and also horizontal component, just like this. Eh? So this is the force. Okay, you, will, you can get the horizontal, the vertical. So let's say you have another force here. Like this. Uh, this one also can be re resolved into two components. So when you want to resolve the force, um, you can draw the axis first. How do you draw the axis? Okay, you need to draw the axis um, from the initial point. What I mean is from the starting point. So this is the direction of the force. So the starting point will be here. So you draw axis here like that. So this is your horizontal axis. This will be your vertical axis. So you can resolve this F into vertical component will be here downward. Horizontal component will be here to the left. Okay. Uh, this will be opposite from this one. Okay. Where this is the horizontal component. This is the vertical component. Okay, so remember um, when you want to resolve the force, you need to draw the y and x axis first. To draw y and x axis, you look for the initial point, the starting point. Okay, like this, right? So you draw here. All right, that will be your x axis. Here will be your y axis. So you resolve this. So this will be the vertical component, but direction downward. Okay. And then here will be your horizontal component. Okay. Direction is to the left. So again, so let's say, okay, I think I better draw in another, this one. Okay. Yeah, let's say this is the force that we refer to. So first you draw the axis. Okay, so this is your x axis, this is your y axis. And then here, so this is the horizontal component, f, x. And then here will be the vertical component, f, y. So this is the f. And then let's say we have the angle here as a beta. Okay, so what will be fx? What will be fx? F cos beta, yes. Okay, so since we are using beta, all right, so fx is actually adjacent to beta. So uh, fx is equal to f cos beta. And then fy here, so this is actually the same as this vertical component, right? So this fy is opposite to beta. So to determine fy, we can use sine. So let me say f sine beta. Boleh ya? Okay, I think this one should be okay. This one no problem. Huh? This one also no problem. So from here. Okay, so let's say um you confuse, okay, what you can do will be look at the angle and then you write uh, 
example lah, cos theta. So cos theta will be this adjacent divided by F. So you get this. So from there you can uh, derive your Fx. And then um, uh, sine theta will be opposite. So this is actually the same as this Fy. Alright, uh, so you get this. No problem, huh? Okay, um, the force that we refer to, normally we will uh, let it become the hypotenuse. Okay, normally we will let it become the hypotenuse to make it easy for you to calculate. Now look at the diagram here. So look at this auntie uh, mopping the floor. Uh, she actually pushed the floor downward. Okay, uh, not vertically downward 90 degree, but with an angle like that. So you need to be careful with the angle, huh? So can see here. So this is the angle. Uh, this is the force acting. Like that. Okay. And then um, remember when you want to draw the axis, uh, you need to draw uh, from the starting point. So it means that in this case will be here. Okay, so you draw the axis like this. So this will be y axis and then here is the x axis. So you can resolve the force and you will get this as the horizontal component. And then here as the vertical component. Fy, here is Fx. Okay, so the, the force acting now is 32 Newton. So can you calculate Fx? What will be Fx? All right, so Fx is equal to, so the force F is 32. Now look at the angle, careful. Huh? So Fx is adjacent to 60. So means that you use cos. So 32 cos 60. Okay, tekan calculator. Okay, so 16 Newton. Okay, now to determine Fy, so still using the same angle, so F which is 32, so the angle here 60, so your Fy is this component which is opposite to 60, right? Uh, so this one using sine, so 32 sine 60. So what is the answer? Twenty-seven. Point seven one two eight. Okay, I will. I want to remind you all. Uh, so when uh, your calculation involves decimal point like this, uh, um, write your answer in at least four decimal places, not two, as what I explained before. So we write more. Okay, two decimal places or more. Uh, four decimal places or more. Okay, next one. But in this case, uh, uh, what is the use of Fx and Fy when you mop the floor? Fx and Fy. Yes, correct. So yeah, Fx is to move the mop forward. So it means that move horizontally like that. Okay, so what about Fy? Uh, so Fy is actually the force that is, um, we remove the dirt on the floor. Okay, so it means that the effective component. We don't mop the floor by pulling, just like tarik upeh just now, right? Uh, so we don't pull the mop like this. So this is not efficient. Okay, so efficient way to mop the floor is to push downward like that. 
okay, with an angle like that. Okay. Yeah? Now, next diagram. Okay, showing a boy uh, playing um, uh, uh, in a slide, nah? playing here. Yeah. So, what actually pull uh, the boy downward? The weight, correct. The weight of the boy actually pulling the boy downward. But uh, in this case, the weight... Um, jam, let's see, I draw like this. So let's say uh, initially the boy is here. Okay, like that now. Uh, the weight is actually not the effective component because if let's say the weight effective, what will what will happen is the weight will uh, the boy will penetrate through the uh, through the slide. Okay, but now the boy is actually sliding downward in that direction. So it means that this weight, okay, uh, is not the effective force. The one that effective is this component, which is the component of this weight, which is um, uh, following, means that parallel to the slide. So it means that we, we need to resolve the, the weight. How do we resolve the weight? Uh, how do we resolve the weight? Let's say I draw like this. All right, so the sliding and then here, there must be an angle here. So following your textbook, it is 50 degree, 300 Newton, 50 degree. So this is 50 degree, okay. The boy is here, okay. And then the weight of the boy pulling downward. Ninety degree downward, nah? So this is W. But the the boy move following this direction. So, in order to determine this effective component, so you need to resolve W. How do you resolve W? Hmm. What should we do first before we resolve? Step number one. Step number one, what should you do? Find an angle. We already, we already have the angle here, 50 degree. So number one is to draw the axis. Right? So you need to draw the axis first. Uh, the vertical and horizontal axis. And when we draw the axis, we must make sure that the weight that we are using now uh, become the hypotenuse of the triangle that you will draw. Okay, so first we draw the axis. So when we draw the axis, we can draw like this. This is another way to draw axis. Huh? So here, so this is a starting point. Huh? Here is a starting point. So I can draw axis like this. This is y axis. And here, as the horizontal axis, okay, like that. So I can draw like this. So this become, okay, so this become um, y axis and then all right, so this become the X axis, so I adjust a bit like that. So now we can resolve W into this component. All right, so this is the component that 
um, parallel to the slide downward. Nah. So here I can label this as W since we are using X so WX. And then here is another one. So we can resolve this. This become the W, Y. Can see or not? So where is the triangle? So the triangle is here. This is one triangle, right angle triangle. Here. Okay. And then this is another triangle. Okay, 90 degree here. Which mean WX. Uh, so this is also WX. Straight line. Uh. Right, so this is also WX, which is the same as this. So means that here and here. These two are the same. And then here, all right, so this is also actually W, Y, this and this, they are the same. Okay, so now if you want to determine W, X uh, with the angle, so you can see here, they give you 50 degree. So this is 50 degree. So I can just lengthen this, lengthen like that. So this is a, another uh, triangle. And see, this is 50. If this is 50, means that this angle, this one is 90, right? So what will be theta? Correct, theta is 40. Okay, huh? so means that this angle is 40. Which means the angle here is the same as this, 50. Because this is 90 degree. Okay. All right. So let's say, uh, uh, okay, what would be WX? What is WX? You can use either 40 or 50. Uh, now, hopefully you know already, if you use 40, what should you use to determine WX? What is WX? Okay, cos 300, oh yeah, uh, because uh, W just now is 300, no? W is 300, okay. So we can label this W equal to 300. 300 Newton, okay. So WX is equal to 300. You use uh, 40, if you use 40, WX is adjacent to 40. So use cos. If you want to use 50, so 50 here, WX, this one is actually this, which is opposite to 50. So you use sine. So 300 sine 50. You will get the same answer. Okay, help me to calculate. See what do you get? Four decimal places, two, two, nine point eight one three three Newton. All get the same answer. Eh? All right. Okay. So it means that the force that is um, effective in pulling the boy down the inclined plane is actually this wx this value not 300 but this is the value that the uh, the effective component uh, of the force that pulling the boy down the runway uh, down the inclined plane Faham? okay so if let's say the slide is a smooth slide no friction so means that the um, the net force acting on the boy will be only this. But let's say the run the inclined plane is not smooth. Uh, friction is acting. So katakan the friction is uh, 50 Newton. So when you draw 
the free body diagram you need to draw you need to add in the friction so means that friction will be opposite direction means that the friction will be this direction like that okay so let's say this is 50 newton friction what will be the net force acting on the boy so f net is equal to wx minus friction okay because why when you look at like this uh, so you can see that wx is this direction and then the frictional force is actually this direction you can see that they are parallel parallel but in opposite direction so when you want to determine the net force it will be this because this is bigger minus this okay so so the answer will be 229.8133 uh, uh, minus 50. Help me to calculate. 179. So the answer is 179.8133 Newton. So this is the net force. Okay. Boleh? Teacher, I have a question. Kejap okay, mah. Uh, yes, yeah. Okay, so in this situation, right, there will also be a normal force acting on the, the boy. Correct. So it's in the opposite direction of WY, correct? Correct. Yeah, so yeah, what yeah. would be the value of the normal force? Uh, it will be the same as? WY. Correct. The normal force, okay, in this case, the normal force direction is not like this. <laughs> the norm, this is not the direction of the normal force. This will be wrong. Why? Because when we draw a normal force, it must be 90 degree to the surface. If this is the surface, okay, let's say like that, right? So the normal force will be upward 90 degree to the surface. If let's say this one, the we you you move it like that right okay you although you stand like this but the normal force will be 90 degree like that okay to the surface so which means the normal force is following this why all right so in this case uh the normal force uh this will be the normal force all right this is the normal force and in this case, the normal force will be equal to WY. Okay, so WY you use, uh, so means that R normal force is equal to WY. So WY is 300, let's say you use 50, 50 degree, cos or sine, cos, correct, because adjacent, okay. So here, 50, WY is adjacent. So you use cos. Boleh? Can, ah? Okay, uh, we continue. Okay, let's say the mass of the boy is uh, 60 kilogram. What would be the acceleration of the boy sliding downward? If the mass of the boy is 60 kilogram. Okay, if M, the mass of this boy. Mass, 60 kg. What is the acceleration of the boy sliding uh, downward? So you need to use here. Uh, this is what we learned last week also. So F net is equal to MA. All right, uh, so from here, so M is 60, so you can calculate the A. Okay. So A equal to? Two point. 
9969 okay uh, make sure you write the unit mesti ada unit without unit you will, you cannot get the uh, the the mark for the final answer okay so unit is m s negative 2 okay ah huh? boleh All right, we look at the example. Okay, look at this example. So we have a, a wooden block pulled by force T uh, that inclines at the angle of 30 degree. Uh, so this one need to be careful. So you must know where is the angle, okay? 30 degree above the horizontal surface. So diagram already show to you. But let's say diagram is not given. You need to visualize the correct angle. Eh? So horizontal. So this is horizontal. All right. So 30 degree. And then table 1.5 shows the magnitude of the force acting on the block. So this gives you the magnitude of the force acting on the block. So we have uh, uh, four forces acting. So we have uh, T. You have of course, the weight downward 90 degree and then there will be the normal reaction 90 degree to the surface and then a frictional force uh, acting opposite direction to the motion, okay, like that. So this is a, a free body diagram, okay, free body diagram. Okay, so calculate the magnitude of the horizontal component and vertical component of T, okay. So... Uh, this one, really hope you can answer already. So the axis you can see clearly, right? So this is the horizontal axis. Here will be the vertical axis. Very clear. Sangat jelas. So. Kejap, cikgu lukis. Okay, you calculate. You calculate, cikgu lukis the axis. Horizontal axis. And then the vertical axis. Boleh? So here is the Now I think this one should be okay So this is your TX And then here Okay, it should be uh, 90 degree lah, huh? Okay, so this is TY. So if you use 30 degree, so T, eh, salah, here is TX, kejap. So this is TX. Okay, so if you use 30 degree, so TX will be equal to T, T uh, cos. 30 degree, okay? And then Ty is equal to T sine 30 degree, okay? So T given as 36, so just substitute. 36 sine 30, that will be your Ty. And then 36 cos 30, that is your Tx. Okay, all get the same answer as yeah, no, not horizontal equal to thirty one thirty one point one seven six nine Newton. 
Okay, and then the vertical component is equal to 18 Newton. All get the same answer? Okay, good. Okay, so far boleh, huh? Okay, so if you look at the diagram uh, now, you can see that um, the one that following the vertical axis Y uh, is R, PY and also W. But can see that R and PY, same direction upward. And then W is downward. So when you want to determine the net vertical component, okay, so these two, okay, net vertical component, it will be R plus TY and then minus W. Why minus W? Because W is downward, opposite direction to R and TY. Is that clear or not? Okay, huh? and then as for the horizontal component, you have Tx and Fr. So if you want to determine the net horizontal component, so it will be Tx minus friction. Okay? Okay, next question. So determine the magnitude and direction of resultant force acting on the block. Okay, so this resultant force, when they ask you about resultant force, huh, it will be a single force uh, that is acting on uh, the object, considering all the other forces, uh, means that you need to um, concern of all the forces acting. So here, you can calculate the uh, net horizontal, net vertical. Okay, so from there, you can get the uh, resultant force. What I mean is like this. Maybe we look at the vertical component first. Okay, so try to calculate the vertical, the net vertical component. Which mean um, it will be like this. Okay, so the net vertical component. It will be R. R plus TY minus W. Okay, use the data that you have from the table. So R is 6. TY is 18. Minus W. W is 24. What do you get? Zero. Okay. So means that uh, the resultant force... That the, the direction of the resultant force, there will be no vertical component. If no vertical component, so means that the, the resultant force, uh, later you will see it will be horizontal like that. It's either this direction or this direction because no vertical component. If got vertical component, then it might be like this or might be like this. Okay? There is a vertical component. Faham? Huh? Okay? Now, uh, determine the net uh, horizontal component, it will be Ty minus Fr. So Ty minus Fr, frictional force. So your Ty is 31.1769. Uh, minus frictional force given as 20. So minus 20. So the answer is uh, 11.1769 Newton. Okay. Uh, so it means that now uh, the resultant force is only to the right. Okay. This value. Boleh? Ah, yeah, T, T, Y. Ah, T, X. Sorry, T, X. Not T, Y. Tx. Huh? So from there you can determine this lah. Yeah, magnitude of the magnitude and direction. So magnitude is this 11.1769 Newton. Direction will be to the right. Boleh? Okay, next question. Uh, determine the acceleration of the block if they give you the mass as 2.4 kilogram. 
Okay, so from here, so now you know the net force is 11.1769. So it means that here will be F net. So F net is equal to MA. All right, so this MA just now, uh, F net just now is equal, uh, equal to 11 point. Uh, 1769 1769 Newton so M 2.4 so calculate A okay four decimal places huh? so equal to 4 4.6570 meter per second per second. Boleh? Teacher, I have another question. Okay. Uh, how do we describe the direction if it's not parallel to the y or x axis? Um, that is the use of the angle. So if it is not parallel either to the horizontal or vertical axis, so you need to show the, di the, the angle. Okay, show the angle. So, so in the diagram, if you label the angle, uh, that actually uh, is already showing the direction. Uh, uh, okay, okay, I see, I see. Uh, okay. Example, just like what we have last week, then. Okay, let's say uh, you have this force acting, okay, F, and then there is another force. Um, let's say we have an object here, right? And there is another force acting on the same object. So this is F1, this is F2, let's say. So when you want to solve this problem uh, by using your knowledge last week, so you can draw diagram. Okay, draw diagram is either using triangle or using parallelogram. So if you use triangle, the, the way you draw will be you draw the first force first, okay, in scale like that. Let's say uh, I don't change the direction, okay, and then the second force, you draw it at the end of the first force, okay. So easy for me to draw will be like this. Let's say this is already in scale, so I draw like that. Okay, so it means that we, I already have this. Oh, wait, ah. So this is F2, all right? So this is F2, this is F1. So the net force, the resultant force, what we learned last week, eh, will be you join the initial to the final point. So this is the resultant force. And in this case, the resultant force um, is not exactly following the horizontal or vertical axis. Now you see we have, um, oh, good job. So let's say uh, this is the y axis and then here is the horizontal axis. So it means that the resultant force uh, is not following exactly vertical and horizontal axis. So there is an angle. So where is the angle that you need to label? So any angle can be, you can label here, you can label here, all right? Uh, so when you use triangle method, you need to measure the angle using protector. It's either, okay, normally we draw here, nah. let's say theta. <laughs> but it is not wrong if you draw angle here, but you need to draw the reference line. Nah. So this is also can, let's say alpha both correct so it means that in this case uh, the magnitude you get it from the length uh, refer to the scale that you choose and then the direction you use theta okay okay so you see now, since we are talking about this uh, this question, so the resultant force that we have here, sekejap. Cikgu sengaja look it, uh, I just pull like this, uh, I don't change the direction. Uh. 
So you see this result, this is the resultant force, but actually the resultant force have two components from here. So this, okay, I'm better draw. So let's say uh, this is the y-axis. horizontal axis so the resultant force that we have here have two components also so this is let's say i'm using symbol r now so rx resultant force x component and then here will be the ry so this is what i mean by um uh, horizontal net force, horizontal resultant force. Means that the combination. So this R X is actually come from the combination of X of this F one, X of this F two. Combine, okay, then you get the R X. And then this R Y is actually combination of vertical component of this F one, and then vertical component here of this F two. Can see or not but we don't go into detail yet now nah, for this part wait until we finish 1.3 then we look at in more we look at the question in more detail i don't want you to get confused now okay boleh faham so when the resultant force have no vertical component just like what we discuss in this question nah? so here so the vertical component is zero so in your mind, uh, the resultant force will be only like this. It's either this or this. But proven just now, when we calculate our Tx and also Fr, the combination is positive, right? Okay, 11. So it means that it follow this direction. Because we, we assume to the right is positive here, yeah, positive. To the left is negative. Okay. Can we proceed? This is another diagram. I think Shakira asked about this diagram last week, right? Okay, so look at the question. Huh? Uh, showing free body diagram. Okay, remember free body diagram is the diagram of the object where you label all the forces acting. So free body diagram. If the question asks you to draw free body diagram, make sure you have uh, forces label on the uh, object. Okay, uh, of a block sliding down a smooth, uh, the word smooth here. The word smooth means just like when you see uh, the object is at rest. If the object is at rest, so we know that uh, velocity will be zero. Okay, if you see smooth, okay, good, correct, Ian. So if you see smooth, so it means that there is no frictional force. So here, you can quickly label friction equals zero. So like like, like this, huh? So you can label the, the friction. Okay, let's say the block is uh, moving downward, okay, following the inclined plane. So the direction of the motion of the block will be this, like that, downward. But... Friction will be opposite. So, means that friction will be here. So, this is the frictional force. But in this case, they said that the inclined plane is smooth. So, you can write friction equal zero. Okay, zero newton. Okay, sketch uh, the component of weight. Sketch the component of weight. Uh, of the block parallel to the inclined plane and the component of the weight that is perpendicular to the inclined plane. So it means that now they ask you to resolve weight into vertical and horizontal component. Okay, so do the same thing as what we ha you have learned just now. Okay, so first you need to draw the axis, vertical, horizontal axis. So you can draw like this. This will be the y-axis. And then here, following the inclined plane, so this will be the 
x axis so i just move my axis so that all right uh chun chun like that but the i can move it here it depends on where you label the weight uh -huh. so make sure that the weight start from the origin of the axis that you label that you draw so this is the axis so you see the weight we we draw it from here zero uh -huh. here this point all right so you can see your triangle already so this is one triangle okay this is another triangle and remember when you draw your triangle uh, this force must be the hypotenuse of the triangle that you draw because you can actually draw like this also is this correct you see if you draw like this this is 90 degree right so the weight is not the hypotenuse uh, so this will be wrong because uh, the hypotenuse will be this side later you confuse boleh but i prefer to draw the force that we refer to as the hypotenuse of the triangle so your triangle should be um, like this okay faham ah? what i mean is the triangle is like this boleh this is 90 degree so that the weight is big uh, the weight become the hypotenuse but if you draw the other way around let's say you draw like this so this is also a triangle but then when you draw like this the weight is not the hypotenuse hypotenuse is here uh here because this is 90 degree can okay so that is the extra thing that you need to remember lah when you draw your triangle. So, Cikgu Padam first. Okay. Alright. So, when you draw uh, your triangle correctly, then easy for you to get the horizontal component of the weight. So, the horizontal component is here. This part. Okay, so this will be W follow X axis, right? So the X axis is here, right? So means that this W is your W X. W X. Where is Y? Uh, following the vertical axis. So here is your W Y. W Y. Okay. And then look at the angle. So the angle here is 60, which means if I lengthen this, so here is 60. So use this triangle. If this is 60, this one is 90. So here is, Rafa? What is the angle here? You have 60. This is 90. Is it 40? 30. Okay, 30. Yeah. So here is 30 degree. Alright, so this one is 30. So here is 60. Uh, be careful. Lah. Okay, so we draw this triangle if you want to determine the angle. Because here is 60, this is also 60. Lah. Congruent triangle, right? Uh, 60. So I mean that here will be 30. And here, of course, will be 60. So for me, is some student memorize. They say, oh, this is 60. So here also will be 60. Boleh, but then uh, good to understand. Lah. All right. Now you, we already uh, label lah, the horizontal and vertical component of the weight. Okay. Uh, next one. So determine the resultant force. Determine the resultant force acting on the block. Okay, what is the resultant force acting on the block? Okay, um, can see here the normal reaction already labeled for you, 12 Newton. So the normal reaction, this is the normal reaction. Okay, 12 Newton. So this normal reaction should be the same as WY. You can also calculate your WY by using this W24. 
this wy should be equal to 12. Can you prove it? Cuba, cuba. Do you get 12 or not? What is wy? If you use 60. wy. Let's say you use 60 degree. So wy equal cosine so if you use 60 wy is adjacent so adjacent means cos so uh, it should be 24 24 cos 60 help me to calculate you get 12 or not can 12 newton so can see that this wy is the same as the normal reaction so it means that there will be no way for this block to either going up or penetrate this direction because they are balanced so this is 12 newton this is 12 newton also Aham? okay there will be no way for this block to move penetrate through the table lah, downward or moving up like that because they are balanced. Okay, now, calculate Wx. So, let's say using 30 degree. So, what would be Wx? 30 degree. Let's say using the angle 30 degree. So, Wx using cosine? Cos, good. Alright, so it will be using uh, here. So, this hypotenuse is 24. So, it means that 24 cos why cos because this is the angle wx is adjacent to 30 so 24 cos 30 what is the value 20.7846 newton okay good for decimal place correct okay so what is the net force acting so now we know that there is no friction. So it means that the net force will be this value, same as Wx. So clearly the block will be moving downward like that. That direction, lah, the 30 degree direction. Lah. Faham? Eh? Okay. So normally, uh, if the question asks you to determine result, resultant force, they will love to ask you the acceleration. Okay, it normally con uh, uh, follow like that because resultant force is using uh, MA, right? So, cikgu suka to this F net. But my F net is actually resultant force lah. So, F net equal, in this case is 20.7846, which is equal to WX. So, F net is equal MA. Okay, just copy this. Make it a habit to write like that lah. Okay. And then M, you substitute 2.4. Uh, then you can calculate the acceleration. Okay, the final answer. Final answer must have unit, correct unit. Okay, what is the value? So 8.6602. Uh, MS native two. Boleh, huh? So far, so good. Can follow? So far, okay? Okay. Next page. But uh, the, the textbook, uh, they write the final answer in two decimal place, okay? So in exam, uh, please write four decimal place. Lebih selamat. Okay, you can look at the, uh, this one is the same as what we discussed just now. But two decimal place, huh? Okay, I think you can do already the formative practice. This one should be easy. Okay, so this is your homework lah. I think it should be okay. This one should be okay, right? 
resolve the following forces into horizontal component and vertical component. Okay lah, alang alang we discuss this. So here, they already help to draw the axis. But let's say this is not drawn, so make sure you draw the axis. How to draw axis? You look at the arrow, draw from the starting point. So this is the starting point. Okay, so from here, we know that if you resolve this, so the vertical component will be here. Okay, as if you push the force to the vertical component. So this is F, Y. And the horizontal will be here. Okay, as if you compress it downward. So this is F, X. Okay, they give you 42 degrees. So Fy is equal to, let's say use 42, sine cos Fy. Where is Fy? This is your Fy, right? So it means that here is also equal to Fy. Use 42, this is opposite. Correct, sine, correct, good. Yeah, I can see your, your answer. Okay, good. So it means that here will be 70 uh, sine 42. Tekan calculator lah. Okay. And then your fx will be equal to 70. Okay. Um, adjacent, right? So use cos. So 70 cos 42. Boleh ha? Okay. Ian already write the answer. So fy equal to uh, 46. 8391 Newton. Okay, help to check uh, whether this is correct or not. Nah? And then your fx, I copy what Ian type. Huh? So fx is equal, this is equal to 52.0201. Uh, Don't forget you need Newton. Here yeah, also, you need mesti ada, wajib ada. Boleh? Next one here. Uh, you are lucky because they give you this already. The axis already given. But if let's say not given, this will be very, um, you must know how to draw the axis, uh, especially for next subtopic. Okay, next subtopic. The combination of uh, C1.1 uh, C and 1.2. So here, here will be your vertical component. So it means that now the pro lah you all. So Fy equal to 90 cosine 64. Sine good. Opposite. Okay. Uh, because like this right. So this is your Fy also. Opposite. Sine. Sine 64. Okay. Calculate yourself. Huh? And then uh, the x component which is here. Fx. Cikgu tulis atas. Fx. Sine cos. Senang right? So this one should be cos lah. Because of this is your angle and then adjacent. Cos. Oh don't forget to write this first lah. 90. So 90 cos 64. Make sure you write the hypotenuse which is the force lah. Okay 90. Boleh? Next one. Showing a man pushing a lawn mower. With a force of 90 Newton. Uh, so here they label the force. But in exam they might don't label the force. The direction. So you must know uh, this part. You can see here. Uh, when you draw the axis, you draw like this. Like that. Nah? Okay. So this will be your horizontal component. And then this is your vertical component. Alright. So it means that the vertical component is downward, not upward. Eh? Because the original force acting is this direction. Okay. So you can determine your Fx, your Fy. So Fx is equal to 90 what? Fy is equal to 90 what? Okay, they give you this angle, 60. So, Fy is 
cosine cos uh, because of adjacent so 90 cos 60 boleh and your, your fx since we are using 60 here fx will be here that will be opposite which is the, the same as this uh. so he'll be using sine 60 boleh okay okay so you calculate yourself, huh? resolve the pushing force into horizontal component, vertical component, okay, uh, using fx and fy. Then state the function of horizontal component and vertical component of pushing force when the lawnmower is being pushed. So what is the use of the horizontal component here? What is the use of fx? So this one is the same answer as the mop just now. So fx correct is to move the lawn mower forward okay move forward and then what is the use of f1 so this is actually to to uh to level the the grass lah. so it means that um to cut the grass at the same level okay apply pressure downward correct Okay, means that the, this force, okay, is is actually exerting pressure uh, downward. Formula for pressure will be P equal to F over A. Yeah? Alright, so this F is the vertical component. Plus also plus this, you know, plus the weight of the uh, lawn mower. So it means that in this case, okay, see here. Uh, if we want to discuss this question in more detail, so there is another force downward like this. This is the weight of the lawn mower and it will be balanced by this normal reaction upward. But if you want to determine the force acting downward, okay, the total force acting downward, I'm not talking about the net force, huh? I'm talking about the total force acting downward, it will be this Fy plus W. Okay. Boleh? Okay. Next week, we will look at uh, forces in equilibrium. So, this will be combination of 1.1 and 1.2. Okay. Combination. Um, yeah, next week lah. Okay. I think to, for today, this is enough. All right. Any question? Can we write bigger vertical net force? Uh, for what, huh? and Kai? Vertical net force. Write bigger vertical net force for the vertical component. Vertical component. Bigger vertical net force acting on the land mower. Why? Why do you need to write like that? What, what is your question actually, and Kai? Bigger vertical. 2B. 2B. Uh, function of horizontal component and vertical component. No, uh, horizontal component in this case is uh, so that the lawn mower will be will will be able to move forward, and then vertical component is to exert um, a force downward uh, to cut the grass in uh, more efficiently. Okay, or to level uh, the grass at the same level. Okay, uh, uh, what if the question asks either pushing or pulling is more effective and why? Oh, okay. Let's say we have another question asking, um, which one is more efficient? Uh, pushing like what we have here. Jump. I draw. The diagram shows this man push the lawn mower like that. Let's say we have another guy try to cut the grass by pulling the lawn mower like that. Instead of pushing downward, he pull upward. Which one is more efficient? What do you think? Which one is more efficient? Pushing the lawn mower or pulling the lawn mower? Just like when you mop the floor, which one is more efficient? 
you push the mop downward like that or you pull the mop upward like this. Which one is more efficient? Uh, logically, will be pushing. Lah. Okay? You never see people uh, mop the floor by pulling, pulling like this. Kan? Why? Uh, so, this is something to do with the net force. Something to do with the vertical component. So, if you push downward, so it means that uh, okay, you have the, the mop uh, W downward. And if you push like this, there is another force acting downward, which, which is the vertical component, Fy. So it means that Fy plus W. If you pull, pull like this, huh? pull. So the net force upward, kejap, let's say this is the mop. Huh? So you have W downward. And the vertical component of this pulling force will be like that, Fy. So, of course, W minus Fy, opposite direction, right? So, it means that this is not efficient. But if, let's say, you push, so you can see that W, uh, Fy is downward, W also downward. So, this one, the effective component will be champol plus, this one is minus. Okay, so, of course, it will be more efficient uh, pushing the lawnmower and pushing the, uh, the mop. Okay, compared to you pull. Pushing because so there will be bigger vertical net force acting the land mower. Correct, yeah. Yes. Correct. Bigger vertical net force, correct. Acting downward. Okay, yeah. so if no more question, if you have question, you can uh, pause in group, you can PM me also. But if I don't answer, please um, PM me a few times. Takut cikgu lupa. Alright, so with that, I really hope what you learned, you can understand what we have discussed today. Uh, hopefully, you will be excellent in your exam, not only in your exam, uh, also in your future life. Huh? Uh, Alright, so... Okay, okay, if like that, so see you in next lesson. All right, Assalamualaikum and happy weekend. Okay, bye-bye, see you all. Take care.